Dave Roberts now available. First questions from Alana Rizzo. Go ahead, Alana. Dave, good morning. I haven't uh, seen your lineup yet today. Is Cody back in there for you? Uh, Cody's in there, uh, first base, um, and then Austin will be catching. Uh, we got Kike in there today at second base. Um, I'm going to give – I wanted to give uh, Kike an opportunity to play. I didn't want him to sit and not take it bad. So that's the, driving that, and Gavin will be back in there all weekend. Um, what do you make of Justin Turner once again being the Dodgers nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award? Um, not a surprise. Well-deserved. Um, he and, and Courtney do just amazing things uh, in the community and um, are always serving. And um, I just it's just remarkable how he can balance a Major League Baseball season and still serve the community. He, he just does a fantastic job. Dave, do you have your rotation yet for the Rocky series? Obviously, Kershaw goes tonight, but um, for your next series coming up? I think we're just staying on turn. Um, I think it's uh, Dustin, Gauntz, and then uh, Julio. Dustin, Gauntz, and Julio. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Yep. Next question from Dave Asse. Go ahead. Dave, last night, uh, Jock Peterson sat bad in the 10th inning. Uh, after he fouled off that pitch that Taylor was stealing on, you were still maybe the only person that was um, giving him positive reinforcement. How, how much does that set the tone for the rest of the season for Jock to get the runner over and sacrifice that, that at bat? Um, well, I, I was happy to see him get back into the bat. And, and sometimes things happen that you wish didn't happen. And, and obviously, we all saw CT got a great jump. And something just came about in the jock, and he swung the bat and then fouled it off. So, obviously, the guys, we can see it. I saw it. Um, but I just think it's really important to support the player and jock in this case and get him back in that at bat because um, it just doesn't benefit when he already knows – you know, he wished he could have had that pitch back and let him steal the base. Um, but for me, I just continue to want to support him. And I'm proud of him for staying in that at bat and, and executing a job to put um, Will in a, in a situation like that to ultimately win us a game. Dave, that type of at bat, how much do you need that when you get to the postseason? And for a player like Jock to do that, does that, get other players to maybe open their eyes to maybe do that themselves? Well, I, I hope it's more than just that at bat. I hope the conversations we have, Dave, um, do that because productive outs, um, swinging at strikes and taking balls, really controlling the strike zone. But, you know, you've seen – you saw the bunt last night. You, you've seen uh, some sack flies here in the last week. Just situationally, I think we're doing a good job. Um, and we just got to continue to do that because, yeah – uh, base runners are harder to come by in the postseason and, and runs as well. So last night, certainly indicative of that. Thank you. Another question from Alana. Go ahead, Alana. Dave, is bunting a lost art? I mean, the theory of bunting is one thing, but being able to execute it is another. And that really got things in motion for you in that, you know, in those extra innings. Um, it's certainly uh, – it's not obviously not as prominent and you know it's close to being lost i think that certainly the bunt for base hit is something that people do at times to beat the shift um as far as sacrifice bunting um you know overall over the course of a season it doesn't really it actually declines your chances of of uh percentages of winning a game but you got to peel back layers and I just felt in that situation, right-hander versus right-hand hitter, sinker baller, um, throws breaking balls to get the guy over to second, third base, CT in this case, was going to be difficult. And so uh, to put the onus on them to field the position and make a play, I just bet on that. And I can also bet on CT to execute. So um, I, I think there's certainly still a time for it. I just don't believe in kind of 
an overarching do or for or against it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Got a question from JP Horn, straight out JP. Hey Dave, I was hoping you could update us on JT's injury status, how the hammy's coming, and are you thinking maybe you give him a few more days off than usual in September just to kind of ease him back into the, the postseason? Um, <clears throat> once he's back, I think we, we have some off days coming because he's expected back on Tuesday after an off day. Um, so I think he's just going through his progressions, JP, and um, we certainly have some off days looking out later into September. Um, so there's that balance of, you know, not redlining them, but also you got to ramp them up to get ready for the postseason so he's sharp. So we'll, we'll kind of, uh, you know, thread the needle with that. And uh, two other guys on the IL, just hoping you could update us on Baez and Kelly and how close are they to the point where you get worried about them being ready for uh, game one of the postseason? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Joe is, go is going to face some hitters. Uh, this weekend, uh, I'm not sure if it's Saturday or Sunday, um, and uh, Pedro's going to throw another bullpen today, and so if we look out, um, he'll face hitters probably Sunday or Monday, and I think later in the week, he'll be available to come back. So I think for me, hopefully we'll get both those guys back next week uh, at the end of the week, and then Joe obviously has to serve the suspension on top of that. That's right. Thank you, Dave. Got a question from Barry Bloom. Go ahead, Barry. Hey, Doc. How are you? Hi, Barry. Good to see you. Uh, question on um, how do you think the lack of development this year from high school all the way through the minor leagues is going to affect the game going into next year and how you evaluate for the draft and how you evaluate your players going into whatever is going to be spring training next year? You know, it's, uh, I guess time will tell. Um, I'm still hopeful um, that we do have instructional league for Major League Baseball players in September. Um, and if that does happen, then I think that actually will give a different group, you know, because the secondary sites, they've, we've had prospects and every team has had certain guys that have still been able to get repetitions, but not really – you know, the game against other opponents, which certainly matters. Um, but if we do have that instructional league, it'll give players a chance to kind of develop, but also play other teams. So I'm hopeful for that. But as far as the draft, yeah, and, and fall ball and, and potential amateurs, it, it's a big deal. And, uh, you know, young players a year to kind of not play, call it 100 games, that's a big void. You see it in your own system as – you know, you've had to flip people back up from the alternate side that, you know, what they're doing is playing among themselves and they're not getting real competition? Um, not necessarily. I, I think that, you know, we have Michael Bush and, and Hosey there and some other pitchers um, that have been getting a lot of repetitions. Um, but, you know, we haven't – we've been fortunate enough that our – pretty much our group of, you know, 30, 32 guys have been pretty consistent this season for us. Okay, thanks, Doc. Stay safe. Yeah, you got her. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, guys.